Will Ferrell, who I thought was severely underused, plays the CEO of Mattel. Kind of an antagonist, portraying an insensitive businessman who, shock horror, wants the company to earn money, money, money. And he's steadfast on capitalizing on female empowerment as one of the angles to do so. Mattel. Nicely played. What's happening everybody? Welcome to Screen Realm. My name's Guillermo and up for review today, Barbie. The live action Barbie film has finally arrived following around 14 years of starts and stops. Sony, Universal, they both had it at different times until Warner Brothers came on board and got it all moving with Margot Robbie attached to star and produce. Before Margot Robbie, we had Amy Schumer and Anne Hathaway circling the lead role that is Barbie. The bumpy development period has been somewhat understandable. After all, the Barbie doll slash toy brand has experienced its fair share of controversies over the years, from body image concerns to gender stereotypes. And the toy company behemoth that is Mattel, involved with crafting the movie via their film production division Mattel Films, well they certainly know it. And so here we are with a Barbie movie directed and co-written by Greta Gerwig, whose credits include well received films such as Little Women and Lady Bird. I really like Lady Bird. It's a film that deep breath, aims to attract fans of the toy line, both young and old, provide a broad enough comedy to strike the zeitgeist, show that yes, Mattel is firmly aware of the toy line's shortcomings over the years, and provide an inspirational family feminist message for today's climate. So, does it nail it all with a balance? I'm gonna say no. Now, before I'm derided out of the critical conversation for any number of reasons, I will say that I did enjoy aspects of this film. I did not hate it. Let's kick off with the positives according to me. Robbie in the lead role certainly feels like a no-brainer now. The Aussie star has, of course, the appearance of the beloved doll, but we need more than that, and Robbie is perfect for the job. Robbie delivers a good performance as this perfect doll, aka stereotypical Barbie to be specific, that is suddenly struck with an existential crisis. And Ryan Gosling well, he's the film's standout performance for me. Gosling nails it as Ken from the himbo simpleton elements to the character's more stereotypically sexist turns. The actor is game for all of it, and he provides most of the laughs that I had. And Barbie Land itself was great. I thought the art and production design of the film's Barbie Land world was quite wonderful. On a visual level, it really did look like the designs and the overall aesthetic of the Barbie toy world were translated to the screen really well. And there's fun to be had spotting the various nods to the toy line. That being said, I'm not exactly well versed with Barbie toys, so I guess I could only enjoy this aspect to a certain point. The film's first quarter also has a good amount of fun with pointing out the tropes of Barbie and, in particular, how the imaginative aspects from the real world translate to this fantasy land. When Margot Robbie's Barbie showers, there's no water. When she has a drink, there's no actual liquid. Life in plastic, am I right? And now for a few things that I think really worked against the film. Barbie, in my opinion, fumbles its attempts to juggle all those aforementioned aims. The film's tunnel vision focus on its message, on what it wants to say about the evils of the patriarchy, woes of the female experience, and the wide encompassing negatives of men, sorry, Ken's, well, it derails this into a film dictated by obvious messaging. It's heavy handed to the point of inertia. Messaging in a movie, the nerve. Look, messaging in a movie is completely fine. Go for it, absolutely. But Greta Gerwig's screenplay, which she wrote with her real life partner and fellow acclaimed filmmaker Noah Baumbach, Marriage Story, The Squid and the Whale, it foregoes any form of subtlety and thematical layering. The second Ken hits the real world and almost immediately gravitates to an oh so patriarchal anti-feminine ideology, I thought it may have been an amusing nod to the type of trigger happy speeches formulated on a Twitter thread. But nope, the film is crafted with an almost angry frustrated lean, perhaps purposely so to drive home the message, but having characters basically stop and preach down the barrel, well I thought that it basically halted the tone and the humour numerous times and really put the film into finger pointing territory. While there's a lot of self aware and highly meta humour here, some of which lands, there's also a hugely ironic branding exercise on display by Mattel. Will Ferrell, who I thought was severely underused, he plays the CEO of Mattel. He's kind of an antagonist, portraying an insensitive businessman who, shock horror, wants the company to earn money, money, money. And he's steadfast on capitalizing on female empowerment as one of the angles to do so. Mattel. Nicely played. And at almost two hours, Barbie feels simply too elongated for what it has to offer. The pace really drags out in the middle section. Once we head to the real world, the narrative seems to take a circling approach for what feels like an age as we await Barbie's return to Barbie land in order to, you know. In my opinion, a tighter screenplay and a tauter structure 
would have worked wonders. There's also a big lineup of stars here, and that aspect alone is good, I suppose, but I must say that it felt like there was a disjointed cut and paste element to the many, many characters and their place within the story and the edit. Like I mentioned, Will Ferrell, his involvement is quite minor, and maybe it's just me, but I thought it was really obvious that his signature style of humor was really cut down in some of his scenes. You could have gotten really anyone else to play this role. And some guest stars like Dua Lipa in here as Barbie Mermaid appeared to be included in reshoots or something. It barely felt like she was in the same scene as everyone else. Look, overall, like I said, I didn't hate Barbie. The film has two great leads, some stylized visuals, some laughs, some nice fan service, and it's a film that stands strong with its convictions, almost admirably so. Unfortunately, and I'm aware that I might be in the minority here, I found Barbie to be simply a bit of a slog to get through. I'm giving Barbie two and a half stars out of five. And that's my review, everyone. Thanks so much for watching. If you've seen the film, I'm interested to know what you thought, even if you firmly disagree with me. Hit the comment section below. And as always, be sure to smash that subscribe button to stay up to date with all things coming from Screen Realm. I'll catch you soon.